We are bumping. Improving sentence writing. I have just graded a whole bunch of your compare and contrast essays. And as I was grading, I started pulling out, pulling out sentences that you all have written. And some of these sentences could be made better. And I'm going to use some actual sentences that you guys wrote. I'm not going to say who wrote any of them. In fact, I can't even remember where they came from. I just collected about four pages of sentences that I think could be made better. Now, if you happen to recognize one of these sentences as your own sentence, do not feel bad. Because when I write, you already know this about me, when I write, I don't do the best always. Sometimes you've seen me post stuff on Google Classroom that's got mistakes in it. So do not feel bad if one of your sentences shows up in this video. Um, because everybody, nobody, nobody was writing perfectly. And this is just an opportunity for me to teach you a few things about how you can make your sentences better. We'll do this from time to time. This is just volume one of making our sentences better. There'll be other volumes uh, going forward. But so let's get started. Here we go. The first one is, I don't get to walk and talk slowly in the hall. Um, this is, I think I know what this writer means to say, but the way it's stated sounds like a teacher could come up to you and say, I'm going to give you a D-log because you're talking too slowly in the hall. You need to speed up. You need to get more words out of your mouth or I'm going to write you up. Uh, I don't think that's what this person means. I think it would have better been put, I am not allowed to talk or to walk slowly in the hall. It's kind of important that you put both of those twos before those verbs too, because it separates them. Like I'm not allowed to talk and I'm not allowed to walk slowly in the hall and it separates them. If you just said, I'm not allowed to talk or walk slowly in the hall, it still might confuse your reader and it may think the slowly part goes for talking and walking. But if you write it this way, it's clearer that you mean that the teacher will jump on your case if you're going too slow in the hall, if you're walking too slow, but not talking too slow. So there's our first sentence. Let's go on. Likewise, in school, there are no unwatched places except the bathroom. Now, I, again, I think I know what this uh, writer means to say, but what they actually said is kind of creepy and scary. Uh, it means that there are no cameras anywhere except in the bathroom. It would better be stated, likewise, in school, every place is watched except the bathroom. Okay, moving to sentence three. In catching fire, people can't suppress their individuality or they will be killed or tortured. Well, to suppress your individuality means to hide it. I think, I may be wrong, but I think what this writer meant was they can't express their individuality. That means show it off, show your individuality. So there are a couple of ways you could have changed this sentence. One is in Catching Fire, people who do not suppress their individuality will be tortured or killed. Or you could say in Catching Fire, people who express their, where is it? I'm, let me make this a little more visible if I can. People who express their individuality will be tortured or killed. You can say it either way, but it's better said as it is in the black print than it was in the red. 
In this novel, everyone is being watched at all times. There are cameras everywhere and every move is being watched. Well, this is saying the very same thing two times. And um, that tends to bore your reader. Just like if somebody were sitting at the cafeteria table and started saying a story and just kept saying the same detail over and over, people would probably start rolling their eyes and tune you out. So um, d try to avoid saying the same thing over and over. We call that redundant or a redundancy. Don't be redundant. In this novel, cameras are everywhere watching everyone. This is a better way of saying it. Plus you get to use your, look right there, you get to use your, um, your brush stroke, a participial phrase, watching everyone. So that's a better way of putting this. Coming up next, they are spied on by centipede-like creatures that have the words wicked or WCKD painted onto them. This is actually a good sentence, except for one thing. WCKD is not words, plural. It's letters. And so this would have better been stated. They are spied on by centipede-like creatures that have the letters WCKD painted on them. Now, that may seem minor to you. But remember, as a writer, you're trying to help your reader move through your thoughts by reading your words smoothly, slowly. You don't want them hiccuping and going, wait a minute, that's not words, that's letters. That slows your reader down. So you want to get it accurately. Um, I can leave the school vicinity if I truly wish not to be monitored and, and am aware of the cameras. Unfortunately, in the novel Anomaly, the people are unaware they are being watched and can never escape the eyes of the scientists. These are two good sentences, and that's the problem. They're two sentences, not one. So that means that these two sentences become a run-on sentence, which is an error, uh, and we don't want that error. So this could better be stated. I can leave the school vicinity if I truly wish not to be monitored and am aware of the cameras. Unfortunately, and that, then you're going to put a period there and then capitalize unfortunately, and also the, some punctuation did need to be added. Unfortunately, comma, in the novel Anomaly, comma, the people are unaware they are being watched and can never escape the eyes of the scientists. I put this one in there. Those, as I said, whoever wrote this wrote well, except for the run on. And it's, a, it's so I'm not criticizing that at all. But a lot of you did have run on sentences. This is one of the better crafted run on sentences. But um, a lot of you had them. So just remember, uh, when you have two independent clauses that can stand alone, you've got a couple of choices. One is you can put a comma and then use a conjunction like and or but. Um, uh, the, like, for instance, in this case, the, this writer could have said after cameras could have said but. Unfortunately, comma, in the novel Anomaly, the people are unaware they are being watched or, you know, something like that. However, uh, so just keep in mind, you can't jam two sentences together without a conjunction. You've got two choices. One, put a comma and a conjunction before it goes into the second, uh, what would have been a sentence, or put a period and capitalize the first word of what would be the second sentence. All right. If someone is caught reading or even owning books, they will be burned by the firemen. Um, we don't quite know who the they is here. And that's a problem I saw in several of your, several pieces of writing, more than a few. You will use a pronoun, but it's unclear what the, what noun the pronoun refers back to. In this case, uh, if the reader doesn't know the book, which I presume is Fahrenheit 451, if the reader doesn't know the book, they don't know if the, the they is the books or the someone. Uh, if someone is caught reading, will the someone be burned or will the books be burned or will both be burned? We, we just don't know uh, by this sentence. So this might better be stated. And if I remember Fahrenheit 451 correctly, people caught reading, reading or even owning books will be executed and their house and belongings will be burned. Uh, 
I think that's the way it worked. Um, also, um, there was one other thing. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to say about this, and now I can't think of it. Um, anyway, putting it this way eliminates, putting it the way it is in the second version, eliminates that uh, vagueness about um, they. Let's move on. These were the first two sentences of a paragraph, and this is going to be the same problem. We're going to get a lot of they's in here, and we're not quite sure exactly who the they's are. And, as, and the reason I pointed out that these are the first two sentences of a paragraph is because if they had been inside a paragraph and somebody had already been mentioned a group of people, uh, you might get away with saying they because the readers would know just in the previous sentence, you know, that's who you were talking about, that particular noun or group of people. But in this case, it's right off the bat in the paragraph, the beginning of the paragraph, and it reads like this. In the book, The Giver, they are always criticized for what they do. Uh, they will get called out on a loudspeaker if they say something wrong or do something wrong. A lot of they's in there, and we haven't been told which group we can make, we can infer that it's people that are probably without power, but you're going to have more than one they at work in this, because if somebody's criticizing, there's one they, and if somebody's being criticized, there's another they. So who are we talking about? This might have been better stated in the giver. People are criticized for certain behaviors and are called out on a loudspeaker for saying or doing something wrong. This gets rid of all those vague they's and works better, I think. Okay, here's the same problem. Also in the book, they are divided into districts and people cannot visit other districts or people inside. That's even kind of vague. I guess they can't visit other districts or people inside. I don't quite know what was being thought here. Maybe they're thinking visit other districts, like go up to the fence and say, hey, and as distinguished from going inside, but I think just visiting other districts is enough. You don't have to say anything about going inside. So I would rewrite this one. Also in the book, people are divided into districts and cannot visit those who live in other districts. That's clearer and it avoids um, the vagueness of they and all that stuff. Moving on. One example of this is in, I'm sorry, let me start over. One example of this in the Maze Runner is when it talks about many different groups of kids who were locked up in different mazes and forced to comply with the government. Um, who is this it? One example of this in the Maze Runner is when it talks. Who is it who's talking? Is it the author of the book? I don't know. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to stay away from such phrases as in the book it says or uh, when it talks about here. Um, the, you can say a book states, a novel states, but we need to know who the it is. Uh, this, I believe, could have been better stated. Um, the Maze Runner features different groups of children and I would use the word children rather than kids in a formal essay. The, the, the Maze Runner uh, features different groups of children who are locked up in different mazes and forced to comply with the government. That way you get rid of when it talks about or that kind of thing. Okay, so those are your 10. I want to go back to one. I, I realized what I forgot to mention uh, right here. So look up here. There's nothing wrong with this, and I wouldn't count off for saying can space not. But believe it or not, in English, in American English particularly, uh, we have accepted cannot as one word, C-A-N-N-O-T. And that is actually the preferred version of cannot. I cannot understand you. Uh, it wouldn't be I space can space not. It would be I cannot like this right here, one word, understand you. Again, I will not count off for putting a space between can and not, but I just wanted to let you know that. All right, you've come through the 10 sentences, and now I think probably I have an exercise for you to write the, write the sentences in the way that I changed them. 
uh, more about that from the live Mr. Stevens. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>